Hello, everyone, and welcome to the unboxing of the final production quality version of Lawyer Up. It will be familiar to those who have watched our other unboxing video, but I do have the expansions, which I don't think I covered last time, so I thought it still was worth making a video for. Everything is always a lot nicer, too when it's the final production version as opposed to some of the digital printing that they do, uh, you know, for card varnish and things like that. There's our rule book. We have seen these tokens before, the final tokens. In some other videos, they've sent them to me before. Here's all your bias tokens. Dice, mainly used for tracking influence on cards or solo version. I do like using the dice though for some of the base cards that whose influence changes based on uh, how many other cards of the same type are in, in the examination. Got our little jurors here. Juror cards, locked side and normal side. These are all your reference cards and some of the bonus stretch goal things. So uh, we may not have had these before, but these are the biased judges. So you'll see that they have a bias icon up there. And if you read the rule book, uh, you'll see how that changes things. But it's a nice little way to make cases as you replay them different uh, strategically. So there's our judges. Here's your normal judge. Then we have a reference card for each side. So you got a prosecution and defense reference. They're, they're pretty similar, but uh, it does talk about uh, some of the uniqueness. It's nice to be able to know who's who. Another card color. And then this is the two cards you need to play solo. I guess I'll open these. These are dividers for the cases. If you want to organize your box and use them, you're welcome to, although it's not necessary. So if you want to separate out your cases and your prosecution and, and defense decks, some divider cards for you. Influence trackers, something very useful for keeping track of exactly where you guys are when you're playing each other and knowing when to pass or not, or keep pushing. Uh, and then we have, that's case one. This is case zero. And these are the based cards. So I'll open a few of these and just sort of peel them out for you. So here you've got all the prosecutions base deck and right into the defenses. These are pretty similar. I think the only card that's different is the five value card is a different thematically named thing. Uh, so the effect is the same, but reasonable doubt and crime and punishment sort of depending thematically, depending on if you're prosecution or defense. And then we'll go through the Art forgery case first here. So here are all your paintings. These are all the original things, with sort of the game as it started. And then as you Kickstarter backers helped us, we actually expanded this case into forgeries. You can see the paintbrush there. So you can add these in if you want to play with that. So there's forge, forge paintings. And there's the spider web symbol if you're playing with Madam Spider. Bunch more evidence there as well, and witnesses. Here's a little card setting the scene uh, for the art forgery case. And then one of my favorite things about the art forgery case is just how modular it ended up becoming. Um, so, you know, we originally designed this short game, basically uses an introduction. So if you're learning the game, this is a great way to learn. Um, and then you can play 
a normal game that sort of expands on on this game, uh, which adds the forgeries in there and and keeps the forger as the defendant. And then you can go for the spider game, which introduces uh, let's find Madam Spider here. Introduces Mademoiselle over here, Madam Spider as the defendant, and get a new defendant changes up sort of the what what the case is about. Uh, and then you can play the Spider's Web, which is, you know, a much longer game that, that encompasses all the cards. So you can sort of slowly build up to starting starting with the game, being unfamiliar with it and learning, and then expanding on it, and then slowly adding more and more cards until until you're playing a pretty, pretty lengthy game uh, similar to the murder case. Um, but again, without without the asymmetry of the card values uh, and, and the locking mechanic. Uh, last but not least, we have the murder case, which has the other knife, one of the great pieces of evidence for the defense to have. And the bloody knife, of course, the murder weapon, the counter to that on the prosecution side. A bunch of neutral evidence. The, I don't even know what we call this, the, the set the scene card, the the case background card just gives you a little bit of story. The strategies you can choose. Again, each person picks one, so there's a lot of different variants in this with different sets of witnesses and different symbols to go after. Um, and then all the all the witnesses, all the colorful characters uh, who are involved in this socialite murder type story. Uh, so that's the base game. Um, cards feel great. Uh, obviously you can see they're flowing nicely, feel good in the hand. These, these tokens especially turned out absolutely fantastic. I love the bias tokens so much better than what we use to play test the game. Uh, but that is the base game. So now I will uh, put this away off camera and then I'll come in and, and show off uh, the expansions next. Okay, so to continue our unboxing, we now have the Godfather Trial, case number two. Uh, you'll see that all of our expansions in future cases are going to come with a small uh, rule booklet, same size as, as in the original game, to sort of lay out any new game mechanics. So you've got the dossier cards here. Um, show you the setup of the case, if, it, if it's different and then uh, talk about how the case ends if it's a little different, and then you know may introduce some new glossary terms. But again, it's just a short little thing. You can keep it in the box um, uh, to keep things consistent. Again, you've got a divider card. Uh, if you wanna put this case together in the box, the original box, you can take out some of these cardboard things and should be able to fit more cards in the original box. You can see it was sort of roomy. Uh, and then in this case, you basically get two things. You get a new judge and all the cards for the case that you need. So we've got uh, a judge, it's thematic to this, a little set the stage card about what's going on. Then you have all the witnesses, strategies. Again, which strategies you pick affects not only the witnesses you use, but how you build the dossier deck itself. Uh, so you'll want to check all those. And then you have all the defense, all the stuff that goes in the evidence deck. And uh, one of the things that's a little unique about this one is the defense's uh, evidence isn't as strong as the prosecution's. So in the drafting deck, they actually have arguments, which are pretty powerful, but arguments can be objected to. So unlike these pieces of evidence, which you're gonna play in your examination and you can't use one of those objective tokens for, these arguments in that the defense makes are, you know, you could, you could say they're bullshit, I guess, if you wanted to. Um, but, you know, it's things like you can't trust a rat, he's a legitimate businessman, they're out to get my client. Just arguments that, uh, you know, aren't founded in evidence. Uh, and then the prosecution, of course, has a bunch of evidence uh, that helps them. Uh, so that is case number two. Uh, here, we'll open up these dossier cards because this is one of the unique things about the game. 
uh, if you're the prosecution, you're trying to avoid these criminal activities that can trigger and piece together your evidence board here, connecting all the connections. Uh, let's find. You want to make all the connections to Carmine, the uh, mafia boss and the godfather. Connect all those pieces together, uh, and you'll and you'll do quite well in this case. So that's case number two. I'll clean this up, and we'll get to the final case, the uh, witch trial. Last but not least, we have lawyer up the witch trial. Uh, so you'll see all our expansion. We're planning for all of our expansion boxes to be exactly the same. Uh, gives us plenty of room to include everything we, we think we need for future cases. Again, you get a divider and a small rule book talking about how this case works differently. The big thing here is you have the mob and you want, you're going to sway tokens off of the mob onto people suspected of witches. And if they get too much bias on them, uh, they will be hung. Um, and you'll see also that witnesses come out in a line uh, over time. So unlike the other cases, which sort of have you set everything up at the beginning, this one's actually one of the fastest cases to set up because you just dump all the tokens onto the mob card, shuffle the witness deck, uh, pull out some suspects and accusers, uh, and then you're pretty much, and then, then get right to drafting. So setup's a little faster, but this game, I, I would still say this case is probably one of the more complex um, to play. The strategies are more in-depth uh, because of the executing the witnesses and everything. So you can see a couple of terms. As certain people come out, we have an arrival term. So as people come out of the deck and enter the courtroom as the mob and the town is losing their minds over this witch stuff, stuff, stuff can occur. So arrival effects happen. And, and it usually adds bias to... You know, accusers come in and throw bias on on people that are suspects and vice versa. So you'll see here there's arrival effects on witnesses. Um, and that basically just means that when this person comes out, uh, you know, she's so innocent, poor little Anna, that when she arrives, each player sways a bias to the mob. So you actually take bias off of, off of people in the line and, and move it back to the mob. You know, here's an accuser when he comes out. The prosecution gets to pick a heart to put from the mob to put on somebody else. So he gets to accuse someone of being a witch. So you basically take all your witnesses, you'll shuffle them up, make a, make a random pile. And then the artwork in this is, is among my favorite just because we got to do a lot of fantastical stuff. Apparition of the witch, you know, it's it's a testimony from, from someone as evidence describing you know, something that couldn't happen in real life, or maybe maybe magic is real in this world. You know, it's depending on which side of the case you're on, uh, you'll be making different arguments. So we have a big deck of evidence to go through and draft. Again, you'll see that there's some arguments here uh, which can be objected to uh, that aren't firm pieces of evidence, like, you know, a warrant for arrest and things like that. And then last but not least, we have the judge, of course, and the mob, the angry mob, who sort of acts like the jury in this case. And then last but not least, we have a small little uh, setting the stage uh, background. Uh, but that is the Lawyer Up production copy. Everything looks great. We are going to approve what you see here and hopefully get things on a boat and out to you sometime early in 2021. So hopefully you all will be arguing things in case of it in, in arguing things in the courtroom very soon. Thanks so much for your support and backing this project. And uh, we can't wait to have you start playing it.